Good morning and welcome to another Lab to Lab education series. My name is Guy Menzies and I, I'm your host today. And on today's show, we have two very special guests. Uh, first off, we have Don Cornell, uh, the Vice President of Jensen Dental, and Nina Rapuno, uh, a key account sales manager at Jensen Dental. How are you both today? Very good. Sure. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Yeah. No worries. Thank you very much for uh, jumping on the show today. We're um, very excited to well learn more about you guys, about both of you guys, but also really digging deep into the the myo meo aesthetic system. And um, you know, this has been a very popular topic for us, and uh, you know, it's been very popular with our audience. And so we're looking forward to getting uh, more into that in a bit. But I guess just to start off, would love to learn a little bit more about you guys and introduce you guys to to our audience today and sort of how you sort of. Uh, got to where you are today. So I guess we'll start off with you, Don, if you don't mind telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got into dentistry. Well, we'll keep that brief because that's a boring story. And uh, <laughs> I, I've been in it for more than 40 years, so I'm, I'm giving away giving away my age. But um, <laughs> you know, I, I think what's important really to today's discussion is kind of what my focus has been from a career point of view. Um, you know, I've always really uh, focused on trying really hard, maybe on the upper end of the aesthetic uh, curve, if you will, um, really trying to cater to very specific clientele focused on delivering natural looking uh, crowns, restorations that mimic natural teeth. So that's really kind of been my focus my whole career. And mm -hmm. uh, through the years, uh, I've been involved with a lot of different companies. Um, uh, Iva Clark Creation and and many others um, uh, with regards to product development and things yep. of that nature. Um, so I, you know, I've got a lot of experience with that uh, over that period of time. And uh, you know, um, as we're going to talk about Mio, kind of how that came to be, I think um, all, everything that was related to Mio is kind of goes back to that experience, right? And back to mm -hmm. that back to that focus. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's in a nutshell, kind of what I do. I've, I've always had a small lab by myself. Yep. So it's kind of my focus. So. Brilliant. And so I guess owning your own lab, you've worked across every different department, uh, from, from the traditional models to ceramics and everything in between. So you've, you've seen it all over your career, right? Eh? Yeah, I mean, in, in 40 plus years, you know, there was no such thing as digital 20 years ago. <laughs> So uh, everything yeah. was analog and yeah, when you're a one man uh, shop, you, you do it all right. You pour the yeah. models, you trim the models, you make the copings, you, you stack the porcelain, you, you, you really have to do it all. So, which is good. Um, you know, you're well-versed in every aspect of, de of dental technology and then to a large extent dentistry. And so um, it's unfortunate, but I think today the people coming into our industry don't have that, uh, same good fortune of really having that experience so but that's the nature of the industry today so absolutely i think that's that's what we're hearing a lot from uh, our laboratories as well is that there's it's hard to find people that understand both traditional and digital these days which is which is causing a few headaches the ones we particularly hear about is uh, in the removable departments is what i hear about but um yeah i guess you know that that experience i guess has given you uh, you know, a great sort of uh, training ground, I guess, to, to become, you know, the inventor of Mio, et cetera. But I understand as well, you do quite a few uh, lectures as well. You travel sort of worldwide, uh, Don, is that correct? Not as much not as much as I used to, um, but, you know, there was a time um, I lost count, actually. Um, somebody posted that at one point in time that I'd lectured in more than 40 countries around the world. And um, I wow. It's probably accurate. I don't really know. <laughs> I had a pretty, uh, I had a pretty vigorous um, lecture schedule and training schedule um, that dates back more than thirty years. So um, you know, these days I stay pretty close to home. Um, I do some travel domestically, especially as it relates to Mio training. Mm -hmm. Some of uh, some of Jensen's um, larger customers, but um, yeah, you know. Um, Traveling is part of the part of the job, I guess, you know, training yeah. has, has always been a passion for me and it's always been something that's fun. So. Oh, brilliant. Well, uh, yeah, we all had a couple of years at home during COVID, but I think travel is definitely back with a bang the, these days. And I think everyone's very excited for Chicago, which I know you guys are kind of a big, um, <clears throat> a big footprint at, but um, yeah, I appreciate that, Don, giving me a bit of background. And then 
Nina, if you don't mind telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got into dentistry. I know you're a very uh, famous face in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I'm not even as interesting as Don. I'm just a key account sales manager at Jensen, and I work with large labs. Um, around the United States. I've been very blessed um, to travel to some this year too um, and last year mm -hmm. to help them, which is something that we like to do for Jensen. It really is about our clients. So um, we try to help them, support them, help them reach their goals. Um, that's the exciting thing it is bringing someone in like Don or um, Kite or you know Terry McQuiston. We have so many people that we partner with and um, it's neat to see that you know we give them the the edge or help them differentiate their products or increase aesthetics or be more efficient or help them with their offerings but other than that i mean i've been in the industry not as long as don um very short um but a couple maybe a little bit under 20 years i would say um it was a fluke i went in for an interview and i fell in love with jensen what's nice. not to love about jensen um it's just a great company to work for um, if you call up, I don't know if you know this, but most of the same people that when I was hired are still there. So, oh, wow. yeah, so it is a neat company. We understand the industry. Um, we understand the needs of our clients and it's, it's, uh, it's a neat place to be. Awesome. And uh, so 20 years, I guess um, you, you've seen, I've seen a few different products. I know Jensen definitely, definitely sell, sells a few but um i guess uh what's you sort of been one of the biggest sort of takeaways that you've seen over the last 20 years and, and how things have changed from from your perspective wow this sounds like a don question <laughs> <laughs> Hitting you with it. that sounds like a hard one guy um for the past 20 years you know when i was hired it was a lot of alloys um mm. we sell jensen alloys um it was a lot of ceramic um and, and I don't know if you knew this, but when I had, I was, I was married. Um, and when I had my kids, I did leave Jensen for a little while. I always knew that oh, I'd yeah. be back, but, um, before I left, there wasn't zirconia. So when I came back, there was, you know, zirconia was the rage. It was on LMT. It was 3M. It was Emacs, all that back and forth. Um, so for me, you know, it's not like a product thing. I love Mio and I love NSYNC um, and I love our products. I think it's really more for me about my clients. So whatever they need um, to help them be successful, that's kind of what gets me going and gets me excited. But the Mio has yes. been a, an amazing product for today. It's um, something that has really helped them because, you know, it gives them back their control. It gives them back the ability so that they can differentiate themselves. Um, it's just a special product because it, it has helped people this year. And um, I've been able to see it with my own eyes. So mm -hmm. I know something um, Don and I like to do. Well, I like to stand by him as he does it <laughs> 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 is show people what's possible with our product. So mm -hmm. um, with Mio, you can really see what's possible. And when you see technicians or ceramists, when they get it and their eyes pop um, and the light bulbs go off and they realize that they can, you know, create out of this framework, something that looks alive and like natural dentition, that's what's exciting. So um, I guess Mia would be that product, but there's a nice. lot of them that go into that. So um, yeah. Well, excited to dig more into it. And I mean, I think um, we've got we've got a comment here from Edwin Fajardo. He said, hi, Nina, VJ and Jimmy here. No, 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 Mike, but we can see you here. So that's probably one of the quickest we've had people just give you a shout out. So you must um, Aww, you hey, must be Jimmy. really helping labs and, uh, you know, great building that relationship with them as well, which I think is, is so important. And the great people that are in the lab industry, right? There's just great people all over the country. And so it's good to have them viewing us today um all right so um i guess just jumping a little bit into them i mean i and, and to jensen a little bit more i think uh you know i think most people know who jensen what who jensen are and they've been around a long time but you know i guess um what is uh, for either of you but well you want to tell us a little bit more about jensen and and uh you know what what you guys sort of offer there as well because i know it's more than just just me hmm. i could take that one so I'm going to take the harder questions. <laughs> <laughs> so Jensen's been around for over four decades. It's family owned. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's like a small company, I would say, where it feels like more of a family. 
Um, we all work together. We're a big team. Um, and our focus is, like I said, is our, our clients understanding their business, understanding their needs, and truly helping them reach their goals. Um, so with that being said, I feel like we are more than just someone that manufactures and creates and supplies dental products. Um, you know, it's it's about the client. But other than that, we have uh, Mio, which we're going to talk about today, the Mio yep. model of finishing system. Um, we also have InSync Glaze, which is a big part of the Mio system. If you want to get that one fire um, approach and to become more efficient, it's very important. As well, we have something that I feel that we don't talk about enough, and that's our InSync powders and ceramics. Um, it's a beautiful ceramic system, and it is very easy to use. Um, it goes on lithium to silicate, zirconia, as well, titanium. Um, it is really pretty. As well, we have Jensen Alloys, um, as well as Jensen's Trusted Refining Service. We have MicroStar Investment. We have um, our Artex Articulators, our digital products, consumables. Um, as well, we have our support and our tech team. Um, and a lot of times, too, I think people know us from our education. Our education is so good. And we do um, have a great lineup in Chicago if you want to check it out or if you're curious about what's possible. It's a great way to find out what it is. Awesome. And and how many people are actually at Jensen in, in total, roughly? Um, you know, I'm not really sure about that. I could get back to you on that one. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> um, so that, that, that's sort of a high level there. And then uh, and then just for our, because we've got viewers worldwide, Jensen is, uh, are you guys selling worldwide or is there um, any sort of exclusive areas um, that you're working in? So Nina, if you don't mind, I'll take that one. Um so what, one thing I would add to Gina's description of Jensen as it's kind of evolved over the years, um, and Jensen, uh, Nina really articulated it well, customers' needs are always at the heart of, of Jensen, um, the way they're thinking, uh, the way the owner of the company's thinking, and everybody that's involved in the company is thinking. Um, I didn't really come into the company until about 15 years ago, really got involved with them. Um, and one of the things that was pretty clear um, at that point was that you know, there was some movement in the marketplace kind of away from, and this is going to take us into a little bit into the Mio discussion as we get going. But as the marketplace evolves, right, companies have to evolve along with that. And um, the president of the company uh, and, and I had many conversations over the years and uh, about where the market was headed and maybe how Jensen could participate in that evolution and maybe what kinds of assets um, and what kind of focus the company would need to have going forward. Uh, at that point in time, Jensen didn't own its own ceramic manufacturing capability. Um, Jensen was the the at one time the largest distributor of the creation ceramic in the world. Um, it made a huge commitment to its creation customers and, and to um, the key opinion leaders that were involved with that material. Um, but, you know, to, one of the things that Jensen was very focused on, as Nina talked about, was alloy development and making your own alloys and really understanding what the needs of the customer are and then focusing the development on meeting those needs. And yeah. that was an area where with ceramic, we didn't have that opportunity because um, Jensen wasn't the manufacturer of the ceramic. And so you're you're always dependent on the collective uh, understanding. And when I say collective, what's going on in Europe and Asia and other parts of the world, and everybody kind of has an opinion on what needs to happen. And so um, while Creation was an amazing and still is an amazing product, and certainly Jensen was committed to that and to its customers for many, many years, um, the marketplace was changing. I'm going from layered to monolithic. Everybody knows mm -hmm. that, you know, and um, we we saw an opportunity and, and talked about an opportunity to participate in that evolution and what kind of assets would be necessary to be successful in not only participating, but potentially leading um, that that. Uh, evolution. And so um, Jensen purchased its own ceramic manufacturing capability, uh, mm -hmm. a company called Chemical in Liechtenstein. Yep. And um, 
This was a company that was supplying private label products to alloy manufacturers all over the world. And uh, over a period of time, we, we evolved that into an internal capability that was focused on, very, very, very focused on very specific products that we believed um, would be necessary in the dental uh, market in the future. So that was kind of the, the how the Jensen has evolved over that period of time and kind of where I dropped into the, the whole Jensen uh, picture. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a pretty big transformation from alloys to, to where you're at today. And then I guess that little just leads us into the into the Mio discussion uh, a little bit better. So I guess how did I mean, how did the idea of Mio come about? Was it just from you wanting something better in, in your own lab or how did you sort of come up with the idea um, in the end, Don? So, you know, it's um, it, it's a it's a little bit of a story, but we've kind of touched based a little bit on it already. Mm -hmm. right? yep. I mean, my focus has been always been on trying to make ceramic restorations look more like natural teeth. And um, for years, we did that with layering ceramics. Um, and also, if you take a bigger picture of the entire industry, and you mentioned it earlier, Guy, um, certainly Nina and I have traveled around the country the last two couple of years yeah. visiting customers. One of the refrains that we hear, and we've been hearing for a long time, is it's, it's very hard to find qualified dental technologists um the industry isn't making them anymore you know and and so um we really need materials and process that are easy to train people on people that don't have dental experience um mm -hmm. make them uh to bring them up to speed and make them productive very quickly and easily without huge investments in time um so that's kind of the background if you will um, probably about 15 now, probably about 12 years ago, I was standing yep. on a podium in Chicago, giving a presentation, uh, at Jensen's lab day. Yep. Uh, the, uh, Glidewell Bruxier zirconia was really blossoming into the marketplace. And it was an anomaly at that point in time that somebody was making a full contoured monolithic zirconia restoration, you know, and at that time, um, you know, Glidewell's always been a very savvy marketing uh, uh, entity within the lab space, probably the premier laboratory with regards to marketing and branding. Mm -hmm. um, they called it Bruxier. They didn't call it beautiful. And uh, they called it Bruxier for its toughness and its yep. durability kind of like a, a white gold. Um, and so the, this, this concept of bringing monolithic, non-layered restorations into the marketplace was, was there. And yep. um, you could recognize, in fact, I, I remember during the presentation, um, I had uh, the privilege of really, um, at that point in time, seeing and talking to a lot of companies. I was privy to a lot of the development that they were doing in zirconia, uh, much more translucent materials, polychromatic uh, uh, restorations, zirconia restorations, things of that nature. So I kind of had a glimpse into where, let's say, zirconia was headed yep. and knew that this would be a, a ramp up in, in materials, aesthetics and capabilities and things of that nature. And so for me, there was this immediate disconnect between where I had always kind of resided aesthetically yep. and the materials that I had available to me to make that happen, essentially layering ceramics, and where it was pretty clear to me the future of dental dentistry was going. And I remember I was pretty roundly um, abused over, <laughs> over that <laughs> vision. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I, I referred to this growing uh, number of dentists who were very interested in buying those restorations as um, being good enough, you know, that the dental population kind of perceived them as good enough for what they needed. Um, I didn't think they were good enough, but people kind of put that moniker on me. Um, but I also said to them, you know, if you don't want to participate it at this moment in time, please understand that the future of these materials, these are going to get better, they're going to get more translucent, they're going to get more aesthetic, 
And we're going to need solutions for this. And so what may appear to be a very non-aesthetic kind of ugly duckling, if you will, today will, I think, be a beautiful swan in the near future, you know, kind of the old story. And um, we're going to need materials and processes um, that allow us to maximize the aesthetic opportunity of, of those materials. And so, um, you know, fast forward from there, um, president of the company, uh, I was sitting in a meeting and um, we had this glaze material and it's probably the most uh, popular glaze in, in this market for sure and in other markets around the world. Mm -hmm. That's our in sync material. And the president said, what what can we do with this? And, um, you know, this idea was already kind of formulating this, this need for being able to modify monolithic restorations and achieve aesthetic results that we could only previously understand how to get to with layer ceramic. And so um, this concept was kind of born this idea was there and uh at that time james Choi, we not with us today but you're probably very familiar with um and was coming and uh was somebody that i had met and had an interest in working with and jensen had an interest in working with and uh, i called james up and said hey how would you like to um, go with me to uh europe to Liechtenstein, to the ceramic manufacturing uh facility and um work on a project and he said yeah i'd love to do it so <laughs> we went there and um we worked on this project and it was really built um on trying to achieve the same aesthetic results that you get in in a one and a half millimeters of layered ceramic in in one to two tenths of a millimeter and uh we were there for a week and we came back and we presented to the company the idea, and we did it all in a slide presentation. We showed them samples of what we had worked on and crowns mm -hmm. and things, and everybody was stunned. You know, I think that's probably <laughs> the best way to put it. Sure, they didn't, that's awesome. They didn't think that was possible, yeah. you know, with uh, with monolithic, and um, you know, we kind of ran with it from there. That's awesome, and uh, so it's going quite quite the journey. And yeah, I think you know. If to be a bit of a, a visionary, I guess, in the industry. You know, just when I first joined from, you know, PFMs was sort of the standard, but Zirconia has, has sort of really transformed the industry. And then, you know, there's other products around to sort of maximize that. And you guys are at the forefront of that. And so I guess, you know, for people who are potentially look, joining this webinar today to, to learn more about Mayo, I mean, what uh, I mean, what are the sort of the strengths, strengths and weaknesses of it? And where does it fit? Well, what sort of restorations does it best fit on um, overall or work with? Yeah. So when, whenever you're talking about a ceramic material, you know, there are certain physical properties between mm -hmm. the, the base material and whatever you're going to put on it that have to be adhered to, to some degree. Um, with layering ceramics, uh, coefficient of thermal expansion is a big deal. Um, simply because you have large volumes of layering material and you have reduced volumes of core material, right? Think about a coping. Coping can be five tenths of a millimeter to less than a millimeter, and your layering ceramics can be significantly more, more in terms of volume and thickness than that. So the ratios are, are completely different. So thermal expansion becomes a much more important uh, aspect of those kinds of restorations. Um, much less so when we're talking about um, a material like Mio, um, when you're talking about a full contoured restoration and the, the size and volume of those restorations relative to the layer you're going to put on it. And um, so really right now, I mean, Mio was designed to work with zirconias and it, it's designed to work with um, lithium silicates and lithium silicate materials. And uh, a lot of people use it with PFMs as well. I mean, replacing their traditional staining glaze for PFM, although it's not an officially indicated uh, indication for use, people do it and do it successfully. So, um, you know, we it, it really speaks to a wide range of, of uh, applications in with today's current materials. Um, there are some contraindications like the old Empress materials, 
which have a very high coefficient of expansion. Uh, we can go over 14. Um, so that's that's not really compatible with that material, but the, the bulk of the restorations that are done today are really zirconia and, and lithium silicate or lithium silicate type materials. So really kind of covers the majority of the marketplace. Brilliant. And I guess uh, maybe this one's for you, Nina, but when, you know, if you're talking to a lab who's looking to get into it as well, well what are the sort of questions that they're asking you uh, before they sort of make a decision to change, I guess, their workflow and the finishing process, what are the sort of questions that, that you're getting and what would be the most common? Well, I think sometimes when it comes to meal, it's misunderstood. Um, what I mean by that is when they start asking questions is, is they really don't know what it can do. So meal right off the bat, some people think it's a stain. Um, it's not a stain. It's a liquid ceramic um, and you could do a lot with it. So when you're talking about with a laboratory, um, some of the needs that they may have, it would be their stain and glaze department. Mm -hmm. So it's matching um, shade, matching the mm -hmm. shade guide um, yeah. from there. So it could be used in the stain and glaze department. And then you have another department, the ceramic department. Um, and in that department, I feel like things are changing rapidly um, and labs have different needs for it. Um, sometimes ceramists run out of work by the end of the day because there's not as much layering going on. Yeah. So now they're staining and glazing. So they kind of want to differentiate themselves. The neat thing is they know what a tooth looks like. They know how to use the material. So they can also do some really beautiful things with anterior or any type of restorations, full contour and use Mio. So that's more or less like making something look layered. Um, and sometimes there's labs that want to replace layering because they don't have ceramics, period. Yeah. They just can't find them. Um, you know, the states last year, you had Florida, they couldn't even bring in a ceramist because they couldn't find house housing. So, um, you know, there's so many um, solutions for Mio in a laboratory. It really depends. And then too, um, which is you see a lot on if you're on Facebook, go to Mio users group, you see a lot of full arch cases, you could kind of see right behind me, a, a beautiful case. Um, but you can do a lot with Mio in that way. And that's monolithic and it's not layered. And they're putting pink on, they're using it, um, Mio on the teeth um, and they're making it look layered. You really, when you put that in your hand and you look at it, you cannot tell it's not layered. It's just unbelievable. So um, I had yesterday a lab who haven't, they have not started even offering a hybrid implant supported bridge and, you know, that's something too, like, well, do you want to start offering, you know, something like that? Cause you can, cause you can use meal on it. So there's so many different ways to use it. It just really depends what the lab wants to do and what their goals right. are and what their needs are and how we can use it to help them. That's awesome. That sounds like, um, you know, it's also helping labs in a way sort of tackle the, the sort of labor crisis as well. Right. So they're sort of being able to speed up speed up the, the finishing process but then also like repurpose employees you know if it's, it's impossible to find find them if, if you if you're able to speed up your process and be more efficient you can sort of cross train and have them working across different areas of the lab so you're seeing that it's helping labs more than just like the actual finished product it's helping with the whole workflow um as well yeah. we were um at a lab um maybe was it april or may of last year and um, there was someone who was brand new. He's, he was definitely one of my favorites. Um, and he was doing like 20 units a day when we got there. He was brand new, like a few weeks in or a month. And um, by the time we left, by the end of the week, he was doing 40 units a day. But then as we continued, because, you know, we partnered with this laboratory. So we continued to, to help them and watch them grow and um, work alongside them. And he said he was so excited. He sent me a video and it was a full arch that he did. Um, so that's that's amazing. Going from just learning how to stain and glaze to really doing something that is drop dead gorgeous on a full arch. I was just so proud of him and, and excited yeah. for the laboratory. So, yeah, you see a lot of neat things um, that Mio can do. It's awesome. And um, so I guess uh, when, if you, if you do sort of get into it, I know as we talk about trained technicians and 
I guess uh, the, the people that even looking for people who are Mio trained um, to, to get into it. But I mean, what, what does the training look like from you guys? And do you come on site or how does that sort of look like um, when, when they first buy it? I feel um, I can answer. And then if you want to add on to it, I feel very strongly. I don't know if you're going to agree with me, Don, but um, when people get Mio, there's a lot of ways that we support them right off the bat. So we have, um, of course, the the simple IFU booklet or our book in there um, has the firing guides, the support of their consultant, their Jensen consultant as well. Um, if you go into the Mio world, which when you put up that link, they can, um, there's an education part to our website and they can go in and take classes. Um, we have live classes every month remotely. Um, we also have modules and training on that website that everybody can use to get their feet wet. Um, there's there's a lot of different types of classes. So, I mean, once they get Mio, they really can um, do a lot and learn how to do it. So um, from there, I mean, that's what when I think about training, Mio is something that can be trained remotely very fast and very efficiently. Yeah. Um, and we do have tech support. We have amazing tech support. So if something goes wrong or someone has a case and um, Caesar Jadik and Terry McQuiston um, are clutch and they have the ability to share their, um, they actually share their um, desktop. They can share um, the brush the you know, a, a restoration and show someone, you know, a one-on-one -on -one. or also they can troubleshoot and talk someone through something. So we have a lot of ways before we actually do training of, of that type of nature before they can take advantage of. There's a lot of tools. So nice. So they, they can do it remotely and, and, and train people up pretty quick. And I guess that's sort of on demand as well. So if you get a new technician or if you're looking to cross train, that it's all available at any time, eh? For them. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Yeah. And that's something that's very nice too, is if they are adding on employees, um, or they're switching a lot of times. I'm like, well, what happened to Tony or what happened to Lisa? They're like they're in the removable department now. I'm like, oh my gosh. So we're retraining <laughs> and um, cross training. Yeah. I, I do like to have labs cross train. Um, I think it's super important if someone's out. I mean, we do know back in the day from COVID, I feel like back in the day, a couple of years ago, um, <laughs> where everybody, you know, 30, 40, one one of my labs had like 40 people out in one day. What do you do? Well, if you cross trained, you know, that is helpful. So um those are some of the, the training resources. But also we have, I mean, Chicago again. Um, we have amazing ceramists and technicians who are going to be in Chicago and who will be demoing at our booth. Um, if they go to the website and take a peek at our schedule you can see what time people will be on there. We have Kite, we have Dominic, we have James, who's amazing. Um, we have so many people that are going to be um, available to to do demos. That's awesome. And uh, speaking of Chicago, do you also have seminars and, and everything as well, or is it mainly just uh, demonstrations at the booth? We have both. Both. We do awesome. have lectures. We have multiple yeah. lectures. Believe it or not, our lectures, I was even super not surprised. I wasn't surprised because they go pretty quick anyway, but they went in days. Like we, we were sold out by the end of the week. Chicago is going to be great. Yeah. I think it's going to be a great time for all of us. Yeah. It's going to be an awesome time. We should reconnect with a lot of people. The first big uh, U S event since, since the lockdown. So that's going to be great. And then obviously a great opportunity for hands-on training and, and hands-on learning, which is going to be pretty neat um, for, for everyone um, to get back and connect in person um, and then, so I guess if, from your, from your role, uh, Nina, I mean, what, what, what does your typical customer look like in regards to labs you work in? Is it mainly large labs, medium, or is it a bit of everything that you're seeing out there with, with this product? Oh, this product. So I were I now, now work with large labs. Um, however, I've had many different roles and I've worked with all different types of laboratories and it's a very unique product where it helps anybody differentiate their products. So depending upon the lab, um, it could be a small lab, it could be a one-man lab, um, it could be a medium-sized lab, large lab, sky's the limit. Um, and it depends again on the needs and the goals of that specific laboratory, but it could it's used by anybody. It's yeah. a really nice product. 
Nice. Awesome. Um, and then, so I know we touched on it a little bit um, before, but a question for both of you, you know, we're talking, if we look at the labs and entire sort of workflow, uh, you know, we're sort of focused, I guess, on the finishing, but where else can uh, Mio help sort of labs save time uh, across their workflow um, to help them get their cases out the door a bit quicker? Where else are you hearing feedback from, from your customers? Well, I mean, as Nina kind of alluded to, um, if you you can carve your restoration types into, you know, with regards to fixed restorations anyway, into three buckets, you know, you, you have the single unit, match the shade guide, stain and glaze kind of monolithic restorations, um, which are the growing bulk of what most labs are doing, right? I mean, whether it's zirconia or it's lithium desilicate or something of that nature, monolithic is now... Um, the probably 85 to 90 percent of the restoration types that pass through laboratories so monolithic something is is kind of um that's the new standard you know that's that's the, that's where we're going and we're not going back you know we're not going back to layering so um you know whether you're talking about basic training on staining and glazing you know or replacing a stain and glaze with a more vital lifelike looking material which obviously mio mio is um that that training can be very basic you know uh, where where rubber really kind of hits the road and where you run into some resistance is that most of the other restorations whether they're layered restorations or whether they're um all on four type cases things of that nature um mio plays extraordinarily well in both of those restoration types as well. As Nina said, there's really nothing the material can't do. The biggest obstacle moving out of the staining and glazing department is not one, um, it's not limited by Mio's capabilities. It's limited by the vision and imagination of the user. Um, most of your layering ceramics are like me. They're guys that have been in the industry for a long time. Um, yep. You know, we we have more than 50 years uh, with layering ceramics. And, you know, what, what has that taught us? I mean, you probably, if you've been in this industry for any length of time or know anything about layering ceramics, you know that one of the major complaints that labs have is I don't have enough room. You know, you didn't give me enough space for my material. And that's kind of ingrained in their brain, you know, as mm. I can't achieve an, a lifelike aesthetic result without having one and a half millimeters of space. And so just getting over that mental uh, roadblock, if you will, that I can I can achieve an aesthetic result in one to two tenths of a millimeter when um, with this material is something that most of them don't believe, honestly, to begin with. And yeah. it's, it's one of those things they have to prove to themselves. Um, some of the key opinion leaders and I won't mention them by name, but they will be in Chicago. You um, you can speak to them individually when when you're there, and you you see the beautiful work that they're doing. Um, I've been side by side with them in their journey, many of them, and you know the the typical process is well, I'll use this as a replacement for my layering ceramics on a few not so important cases and then they see the results of that and they they put those cases in the patient's mouth and they're they're kind of blown away you know and then they go to the next level and the next level and over a period of uh, of time maybe six months to a year and multiple cases they're on their own kind of um journey of discovery of what mio can do and honestly i i think it's i kind of chuckle at that because really it's a discovery about tearing down misconceptions about yep. what you need in order to achieve really great aesthetics because Mio is a tool that was designed to deliver on all those levels. And what's really amazing is when you see these people and where they are in that journey, they will all tell you the same thing that there is no limits to what you can do. And they're completely blown away by what they get aesthetically when their entire mind was wrapped around aesthetics is only possible through layering and you know on their own self journeys they kind of check those boxes as they go along and they come to the realization that you know what those preconceived notions really weren't accurate and I, yeah. I see that something totally different is possible.
and it's a it's a cool journey for them and it's certainly for us um you know it's a it's a cool it's something really fun to watch and be yeah. a part of as they grow into that so that's really the biggest obstacle moving it through the laboratory past the stainers and glazers it's more mental it's more understanding what the material can do and then developing the skill sets to um to make it happen Awesome. So I guess we're reading between the lines a little bit as well. I mean, I guess it's sort of like just just get it in the lab, learn more about it and, and start slow with it eh? and, and see how it sort of helps you and, and really see if it's a product for you. I mean, maybe it's not for everyone and we know here at Evident that our design services aren't, aren't for everyone, right? But um, I think just get it in the lab and sort of play around with it. Would that be a, a good way to sort of get started with uh, Mio? Yeah, it's a, it's a great way. As Nina alluded to, and we've talked about since the beginning here, it's it's really really difficult to find skilled skilled people in the in the dental field. And um, as I said earlier, the the good news is that with very little training, you can bring somebody in, introduce them to the techniques involved in in we'll say staining and glazing, although um, you know which is the traditional application of color and glaze to a restoration. Um, the techniques with Mio are, are only slightly different, but very familiar. And, um, you know, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of it. You know, I give you a paintbrush and show you how to use it and give you a roller and show you how to use it. Once you're comfortable with that, then uh, and you understand the medium and you understand the material, then the only limiting factor is do you understand what teeth look like? You know, because if you know what a tooth looks like, you can replicate it with Mio. If you don't understand what a tooth looks like, then that's the education gap that exists yeah. there that, that you know, that you have to train people on. But um, Mio allows them to move through that process as quickly as, as possible. In fact, um, there's no question when we talk to the labs, if we think about what it takes to train a ceramist, and how many years it takes for them to understand not only how to put it on, but then to make it look like real teeth, um, because you don't see what it's going to look like until after it's fired. There's this huge learning curve that takes years and years. I mean, I can certainly um, attest to that from, from myself. One of the beauties of Mio is we we say, you know, whatever you see when you're working with it, that's exactly what you're going to get when it's fired. Yeah. And it takes that whole learning curve out, right? So yeah. you can take somebody who's a novice and give them this material and they can create whatever they want. They can paint a duck on the tooth if they want, you know, if they know how to, <laughs> they know what a duck looks like and they can, they can actually realize it on the tooth, they can fire it and it's going to come out looking like a duck, you know? So, <laughs> you know, the, the limiting factor is not the material. It's really their understanding of what teeth look like. Yeah. Which leads back to the uh, internal sort of training and, and, and really, I guess the recruiting and everything in, in between, but, you know, I think that's what's so exciting is that you're seeing, you know, this sort of, I get in a way, a traditional sort of process, but this a new material coming in, which is transforming that and, and helping labs sort of combat, which is what is a very difficult labor market by, by making them more efficient. And and then I guess producing better restorations. I know, I guess with less layering, it probably means less chipping and, and so on as well um, is a big benefit for you guys. Huge. Well, big benefit to the customer, right? Yeah. I mean that we, we Nina and I were on a call um, with a with a large lab customer, a large partner of ours, um, mm -hmm. just a couple of days ago. And one of the difficult things that laboratories deal with is this transition from 15 years ago, when or 12 years ago, whatever it was, when we introduced monolithic. Monolithic tended to be the less expensive restoration in the lab and layering was the premium restoration. And as the market has transitioned away from layering, yeah. a lot of labs are struggling to understand what am I charging for? Am I charging for the process, which is now not layered, it's now monolithic, or am I charging for the result? Yeah. Because you know, and I and we like to tell them, listen, dentists pay for result, they don't pay for process. So if you're yeah. able to deliver the highly aesthetic outcome, whether it's monolithic or layered, um, that's that's how you should price it, right? And the fact that it's a, a faster, more efficient, more predictable um, sh shouldn't be a reason for discounting the the knowledge and the effort and the expertise that you've put into it, you know, because the result is there. 
The result yeah. is there. And uh, yeah, and, and part of that discussion, exactly as you just said, is look, at the end of the day, if you can make it look like a layered restoration, or in many cases, they're finding they can do it better because of what you see is what you get. They know yeah. exactly what it's going to look like when it comes out. I always say, and think of it this way, you've achieved all the aesthetics and this is a restoration that won't chip or shear or break. It's actually a better restoration. Yeah. So, you know, the doctor's getting a deal. <laughs> so don't, don't, yeah. think, don't think about charging less. Think about what a great value the dentist is getting. Not only are they getting a beautiful restoration, but one which is much more robust and resistant to chipping and breaking. Yeah. And if we can figure out who we could ever convince a dentist that they're getting a deal on a crown, that's maybe something we should all start selling. <laughs> that's a different course. That's a yeah. completely different course. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other course. <laughs> it's good value for money. There's time and effort that went into this. Um, nice. Well, um, it, it really does seem like, like a no-brainer. But um, I, I'm going to jump to some questions that we have from the audience now. So um, I'll let you guys sort of um, fire into it. But um, I guess... Um, uh, one here says, in terms of cost, is Mio a cheaper alternative to stain and glaze? Truth. One of our questions here. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Rather than get into the nuts and bolts of it, because the reality is, um, who's stain and glaze? So we could start with the basic, yeah. question, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Mio is delivered in a four gram jar. There's a lot of uh, stain and glazes um, that are delivered in two and three grams. So, you know, people say, well, that one costs this and this one costs that. But yeah, but what are you getting in terms of volume? But here, here's the thing we can get. I don't want to get sucked into that discussion. And I think yeah. it would be a huge mistake because yeah. if you look at Mio as a stain and glaze, then then um, you're really not understanding the potential of the material. Right. There are when you go online, you go to Mio World or you go on to. Uh, Mio Liquid Ceramic Users Group, which is uh, was started by a gentleman down in Australia, where there's I don't know Nina, what like fifteen thousand people that participate <laughs> in, that, in that group, um, and you look at what those people are doing, you can't do that with the stain and glaze. That's not possible. I mean, you never will achieve that aesthetic result with stain and glaze. So. To expect that Mio and the whatever che the cheapest stain and glazes in the market are going to somehow be equally priced when the capabilities and the aesthetic results of the two materials are worlds apart, um, you know, just because it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck doesn't mean it's a duck, right? <laughs> like they open it up and well, this is nothing more than a than a stain, and it's it's the furthest thing from that. You know, you don't have different translucencies and opacities and all the all the other things that go into making Mio work the way that it does. Those things don't exist in a stain. So yeah. we, you know, I think it's two it, very different products. You, you don't want to get sucked into that. And and then lastly, I would say, you know, you, you take a jar of of something and you realize that in a short, you know, very short period of time, you're, you've you gone through 60, 70, 80 crowns with that jar. I mean, really, what are we talking about here? You know, the, a difference of $5 can literally mean a difference of five to seven cents per crown, you know, when you really break it down that way. So, you know, if we don't really get too involved in the pricing discussion. It's more about what can you do with Mio? How does it meet your needs? How, how can it save you time, make you more efficient, and most importantly to your dentist customers, how does it improve the quality of your restoration? Because that is who you are. That's your brand. That's what you're selling. And if Mio allows you to sell a monolithic restoration at the same price point as you're layered and the dentist doesn't see the difference, it looks just as beautiful. Well, and, and your ceramist who was making 10 restorations a day can now make 20 what are we talking about here that yeah. that's really where your costs are right is your labor and, and your efficiency and your end product and how your dentist customers value that end product so you know it's really kind of the the wrong direction to take a discussion really you want to talk about the cost of things you talk about what you're missing out on and what yeah. you're taking advantage of not the cost of what's in a jar yeah, nice that's, that's a good answer and looking at the value it brings and then i guess some um, 
Does does Jensen offer like uh, lab laboratory consulting or on workflows and, and uh, bits and pieces like that as well as part of as part of what you guys offer there? Well, we do have lab. Um, our consultants and we have consultants. Yeah, that would be everybody has a consultant when, wherever they are located. So yeah. if they call in, they have someone that is handling their account and managing their account and can. Well, um. Pretty simple questions here, but um, uh, the Mio classes at uh, Chicago are they 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 free to attend? Someone's asking. Chicago are they 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 free to attend? Someone's asking here. They were. Now they are not open because they are so <laughs> we are, Oh no. We have no space, but um, yeah. So, but you know, you never there, know. There, there will be demonstrations too. Yeah. So Nina's speaking specifically to the, the lectures, which are de in a dedicated room. And obviously because they're in a dedicated room, they we have very limited capacity. And as you know, uh, Guy, that the Mio product has worldwide um, appeal and tremendous mm -hmm. interest. And so, um, as Nina said, those classes, not only that, not only the product, but when you look at the people that are going to be presenting, they're, they're all tremendous brands unto themselves, right? So, um, they're people that are highly skilled and very, very sought after for their knowledge and their expertise in, in making beautiful restorations. So unfortunately, um, those classes are all full. However, those same people will be doing live demonstrations throughout the uh, two-day LMT uh, event at the Jensen booth. And those demonstrations go from anywhere from a half an hour to an hour, depending on, you know, the, the level of questions and, and interest. So you're not always lost. People can still attend those um, and they can see one or all of them. Um, depending on their own schedules during the day. Um, mm -hmm. and that's open to everybody and limited only by how far away from the booth you have to stand <laughs> to <laughs> see it. So. Yeah. And whether or not you can uh, fully understand where you are on the on the trade show floor, those things can get, get you can get lost to how crazy it's going to be down there. Um, that, hey, that'd guys, be awesome. Mm -hmm. They could also, um, if someone has a question, and if they're, or their lab techs are going to um, Chicago Education Day, I encouraged my labs mm -hmm. to write questions down um, and yep. go to the Jensen booth because we do have people that are demoing all the time and that can answer not only their question, but can actually demo and show them a way to do it. So awesome. um, if they come prepared, I'm sure that, you know, we can definitely help them with all of their needs. And at the booth, you're going to, the customers that go by there are going to see samples that our key opinion leaders have um, graciously given to Jensen to yep. uh, be able to share and show people that are interested to see what's possible. And you're going to see some really spectacular stuff that you'll be able to hold in your hand and look at and say, really, that's not layered. I mean, it's, it's kind of fun. So they'll yeah. have a good time. They'll get to see it and hold it and 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 really see what some of the best people around are doing with it. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for them to learn, learn in person. Uh, and then I know we are getting towards the top of the hour. So for those that have joined a little bit later, there is also a little bit more information just in the chat there if, um, for the website, but also you've got Nina's details there as well. So I guess, Nina, if anyone has any questions, you'd, you'd encourage them to fire away. Um, send you an email um, as well. And then I know we're going to throw up a poll here at the end as well, which is going to just be, if you want to learn a little bit more about Mio, uh, you can just tick on that. And then um, yeah, Nina, Nina and the team will, will be in touch. So it's a good opportunity just to raise your hand essentially and then get some sort of one-on-one -on -one, um, sort of consulting, I guess, on, on the back of this webinar. Uh, but I guess as we get towards the top of the hour, I guess just, um, you know, any sort of, final or parting thoughts from from both of you really i mean is there any what would be the most important message that you'd suggest that our lab should take away from this webinar today it's a tricky yeah. one that one <laughs> hack at that <laughs> <laughs> i sure absolutely i would um in general i would click on the link and i would do some research um because if you do have mio there's a lot of things that you could do with it. So reach out to us. We'll be glad to help you. Um, hold your hand, figure out what you can do. Go to the website, um, go through our tutorials, go through our modules. 
um, every little technique. There's so many things that they can learn. Um, so don't miss out on all the things that you can do with Mio for your workflow, for your people, get excited. Um, and hopefully we'll see you in Chicago. And I, I would add to that, um, you know, we all know that our industry is changing dramatically and young dentists coming out of dental school really are completely um, uh, immersed in digital technologies and primarily monolithic type restorations. And the future of our industry is monolithic. Um, and Mio is, uh, was designed to address the, uh, those restoration types and, and help you to achieve whatever aesthetic result you're, you're looking for. And uh, I think when you come to Chicago or you go on the Mio Liquid Ceramic Users Group or you come to Mio World on the Jensen site, you're going to get a, a, a real opportunity to understand what's possible there. And it should really open your eyes to kind of the future of, of dental technology. This is where we're going. This is where we're at. Yeah, and I'd say one thing I, I'd, I'd um, follow up on there is that those Facebook groups, there's so many out there and there's so much education on there, isn't there, for our labs. And if you're looking to get into a product, to, you can really there's basically a, uh, a Facebook page for anyone out there now where you can learn from your peers and sort of see – see what others are doing out there. So that that's also something which I think a lot of potentially labs and, and, and people in the industry don't take advantage of. So it's, it's awesome to hear that there's, there's a media one out there. Um, but uh, thank you so much both for jumping on the uh, webinar uh, today. I think it's been, it's been excellent to learn more about, <clears throat> about Mio. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing you both in Chicago in, in a couple of weeks. But thank you very much for jumping on. I appreciate it. Hey, we thank appreciate you, you. Thank you. No worries. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Cheers.